Hey guys, I'm Eric and we are Notes and Nerds and I'm sitting here with the ever so lovely and wonderful Deborah Voorhees. Hey guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. So, you, to get it out of the way real quick, you have been in a certain movie with a yes. character that shares yes. your last name. This is true. It's a little known film. Not many people uh, will recognize it, but um, for those of you who do, it's Friday the 13th. Part, Part five. five, yes. yes. It was mm -hmm. awesome film. Um, I know back in the day it got a little bit of flack because yes. the ending, spoiler alert, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, um, it wasn't actually Jason. That's right. That's it right. was a, uh, let's hear, was it the uncle or? It was Roy, uh, the ambulance driver. That film really harkens back to the original film. Yeah, because it was like, an, uh, he was an uncle, father, I can't remember what his was role was. He was the father. Of to... one of the kids who died in exactly. the halfway house. Yep. And I remember the scene where he falls out, I think it was a barn and... No, no, no. Um, Vic, uh, he had his axe and okay. um, took off his arm. And okay. And he let out. I'm just thinking so I wasn't... Candy bar's still in hand. I got you. There was a scene that I remember because the mask came off and the, mm -hmm. they see his face and it's like... And I know right. a lot of flack for that. Uh, okay. because oh, it wasn't oh, you're him. talking about Roy falling out of that. Okay, well, I was thinking that you were talking about his son. Yeah, but yeah, yeah he did. A lot of people he did not like out. it because it's right. like... Because he had a lot of the supernatural powers, but wait a right. second, it's a regular guy. So it kind right. of hurt it. Mm -hmm. And brought back Jason for the part six and right. all that. Right, They had uh, to resurrect him. How much fun did you have for that film? Oh, it was a blast. You know... Working in a horror film, it's, uh, you know, it's like going to the playground. You get to hang out with, you know, the kids and you get to put on your makeup and you all play pretend, okay, lay there and act dead. Okay, <laughs> the, are you finished that cat? You know, I mean, it's just, it's fun. You know, oh, how, how cool is that? It, people like to say that the, this violence is not good for the kids, but it's mm -hmm. the, the violence in horror films from the 80s right. and even the 70s was mm -hmm. so campy and over right, the top. Right. Exactly. Like we were talking about in part three, mm -hmm. where there's this, seat, uh, this leather belt that's wrapped around the uh, tree right across the guy's face, mm -hmm. and we're discussing oh, the you're logistics. you're talking about Eddie. Yeah. That's five. That was five, okay. Mm -hmm. That was five. Oops. Yep. It, it was right around here. Here across his and eyes. Then and then in the just, back, they did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we was arguing the logistics of how perfect he got that. And I was like, all oh, this is a moot point because did you notice the rings lined up perfectly mm -hmm. around all that? Like Jason somehow planned it right. without actually being there firsthand. Mm -hmm. So it's like campy deaths. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's fun. It is fun. It just, it's a fun scare. It's like going to a carnival. Mm-hmm. And exactly. so it's totally, it's uh, completely different. And you gotta love the rules of horror films from back then that uh, Wes Craven loved so to play with and scream. So freaking Puritan. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Sex is bad, kids. Or no, Jason it's really will kill good. You. So have as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> So I wrote down some questions because okay. we've, it's been a long day here at Slash and Bash in We're Liberty exhausted. Hall. We're <laughs> exhausted. So uh, my friend Greg, who helped do an interview earlier for me with the ever wonderful Leslie Eastbrook that you got to sit by today, mm -hmm. you guys look like you were just talking it up and having yeah, a good time with each other. Yeah, we had a really other. nice time. So you are no, not just an actor or actress. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how the Hollywood does that anymore. It's, if it's all actors or all, you know. I don't Who care cares? either way. Okay. No. Going from acting to directing, mm -hmm. um, what do you see uh, different from the roles in that process? I mean, going from like when you right. was in front of the camera to the behind it. Oh, that's a good question. Um, and there, there, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of difference. I think to be a good director, you really need to spend some time in front of the camera. I mean, not that I, I shouldn't say to be a good one, because obviously there's clearly some wonderful directors that have yes. it. But I do think it helps you with a little bit of an edge with your actors to understand what they're going through. Um, with the director, you have so much on your shoulders. You're just, you're carrying everything and you're having to pay attention to everything. Mm -hmm. and in so many ways, it's so intense. But absolutely give it to the actors every time as having the most difficult role. Because when you're filming, there is nothing realistic about what's happening. 
Mm -hmm. You, um, on stage, you at least have, for three walls, you have your world and you're acting within that world. And there's not cameras and cuts and now we're doing the close-up and this and that. Um, and they have to keep it natural and they have to keep it believable and they have to um, do it over and over mm -hmm. again no matter how many times they have to cut because some damn plane went over the head. And so um, being keenly aware of the obstacles that your actors have is, is crucial. Oh yeah. So I understand, because like where we're shooting this little piece is a great example mm -hmm. for you guys, the viewers. Uh, behind the camera is all this open space and in a right. situation like that you've got like you think this is just a small room but you've right. got camera or light people over there you got your audio mm -hmm. people over there right. you got assistants running back and forth as quietly as you can right. because well I nobody's running while well, nobody's running during shooting yeah during shooting it's you know everybody you hold very steady because if you have a shot of two people and they're supposed to be out in the middle of nowhere and then footsteps go by and then the footsteps yeah ruin the sound so you can't have anybody moving exactly. during the shooting true but um you do have um you know once cut happens and everybody jumps into place and does what they need to do because the camera mm -hmm. the, the audio picks up everything oh yeah it? yeah no if i'm sitting under here and i've got something that i'm breaking under there the sound guy is going to be going who's doing that what's going on <laughs> and then you just became the bad person for the day because right. you just made everybody reshoot a right. long take right. that was perfect right so, uh, noticed that your films you direct that mm -hmm. the f uh, the films that you directed and showed tonight here at uh, mm -hmm. Slash and Bash were done in black and white. One uh, of them was catching up was black and white. The other two were color. Was there a particular reason <laughs> why you shot in black? Oh, and the one with the yeah. twins, you had a little black and white, some color back to black. It and was white. actually just low saturation, but it was actually oh. all color. Okay. Yeah artistic points or were you going yes. for um with catching up i actually had it fully color graded mm -hmm. and it looked great i loved it but something didn't feel right to me about it and uh so i was pulling out pulling down the saturation trying to figure it out and i put it all the way to black and white and i was like there's my movie yeah that's where it belongs in black and white and then you think about it so often you know in films when you get into fantasy they go bright colors mm -hmm. and I, that's not necessarily a bad thing but really everything is in color fantasy is black and white that's not real and i felt that their conversations about murder and the casualness of it was so surreal that the black and white taking you into a world that doesn't exist so it created a color sense. cue of the psychological mm -hmm. aspect of what was yeah. going on in the film. Yeah, to me, it wasn't about looking old-fashioned. It was about um, respecting what the film was about. Okay. I can very well understand that because mm -hmm. there's a lot of films that we've all seen that <clears throat> have gotten really popular because nerds like us go back and re-watch them and go, did you notice this? Because there was something going on and they mm -hmm. was referencing that. So very, right. very cool. Very right. cool. Thank you. Um, do you have any advice for people that want to get into the whole horror industry for, right. uh, as a point of, from the perspective of an actor and as a perspective as the uh, director? Yes. Um, first of all, don't wait for anybody to come give you a job. Just forget that. Go out there and make your own stuff. You know, talk to your buddies. Um, get together. You know, get whatever camera that you can and get whatever lights you can and just start shooting start cutting start understanding the art start studying and just start creating um the biggest thing that i see in uh, with a lot of filmmakers especially young ones trying to come up but older ones too is they have this illusion that you know the big studios kind of come down from the sky throw some money at them and they're going to make their big picture and then they're going to have their 10 picture deal and everything's hunky dory and they're waiting for that oh i'm gonna i'm not gonna take a job until i can sign a big contract or even just a regular union contract don't do that guys come on get some experience 
you know, I, I want to see what you've done. Fan you know, before like I this. work with you, I, I and if you can't go out there and make a film on your own, why should I trust you and bring you on my set? Basically, what you're saying is literally create a visual resume. Yeah, you have to. Even if you feel like it is so cheesy, right. um, who cares? You made something and you showed some artistic talent with it. Mm -hmm. And that's from the directorial filmmaker's perspective. Right. I'm that's from say. acting too. Even acting. Yes, of course. Well, you want to, yeah. you want to, you want the acting job that you want. Write the damn script and get out there and do it. Uh, Perform it. The funny thing that I've been doing is networking with people mm -hmm. like yourself and uh, gentlemen like Gary Pyle and Patrick Ray that mm -hmm. have been here today for Slash and Bash, who are right. directors, producers. And sometimes you feel guilty, like, can I be an extra in one of your films? Mm -hmm. And I literally mean like somebody who's dead on the ground. Right, right. They need people like that right. all the time. Oh, yeah. Big movies, yeah. especially when they Absolutely. want to have a lot of people. Don't get, don't expect to get paid. Right. I'm looking at like bragging rights. I get to brag to my friends and my family. Right. I'm, I'm an right. extra in this film. Right. And Alan Rickman's a good example, but mm -hmm. not the rule of thumb. You mm -hmm. start off doing these little bitty things. The next thing you know, you right. audition for something. Boom. Did that kind of right. happen for you or Did the path that you took to get there? To get to, to film. Well, when I was in Hollywood, it was a different animal. First of all, um, unions were really strict back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just didn't shoot without being a part of a union. Nowadays, things are very different. Um, more people are shooting and they've had to become more open to stuff. And, um, you know, it was more studio dominated or large film company dominated. Today, that's not the case. Indie films uh, come in so big that they do, and a lot of like Gary, for example, mm -hmm. Todd Sheets is another one. They don't always have the funding for their films to rely on right. the guilds like SAG, and I cannot right. remember the other one that's out there. And because mm -hmm. the requirement uh, required base pay for even ac uh, extras can be a right. little too high to make that film. Right, it, it is. And so, you know, you just have to get out there and do it. Do the work. Get out there. Do the work. I, don't, I can't emphasize that enough. And for God's sakes, help your friends. Oh, yeah. Don't sit there and, you know, well, gee, you know, it's their first or second film that they're trying to get off the ground. They can barely feed you. You know, just just do the work. You'll actually get some um, a resume. You'll get a reel. Mm -hmm. You'll put it together. You know, um, be gracious, be kind. Whenever you're on set, I don't care who you're talking to. Never be unkind to somebody. Always be gracious. Oh, Always yes. be kind. And you you know. It, it goes a long way in this business. I'm a complete nobody in this whole mm -hmm. grand scheme of everything relating to the fun that I'm having. Mm -hmm. And I realize that as on a personal note right. compared to you. All I can say is I'm having a I'm blast. I'm nobody too. We're nobody Well, you're, together. A little, you're, you're, you're more of a somebody than I am. <laughs> I I'm know. not going to rob that from you. <laughs> I just know that everything I do is so much fun, and I, I hope that one day I can be a guest at a film festival like, right. you, know, like you are here. Because from my perspective, I don't want to worry or think about the idea of, well, maybe I get paid the next gig. Right. I travel two hours any direction for any extra part that I can, even if it's for five minutes on that screen. Right, sure. Because it's fun. Right. It's exciting. And I don't expect to get, I, I would love to see the Alan Rickman effect, mm -hmm. but it's not going to happen. I right. But I'm having fun. And, Right. And that's how you still feel about it every day, isn't it? Oh, sure. Everything Have you do. fun. Yeah. Enjoy it. And take the opportunities. Sometimes, you know, they may seem like, oh, it's a very small opportunity, but you never know. And, you know, if you just have a good time for the day, didn't you just spend your day doing something wonderful and great? And isn't and that people... worth it right there? Yes, it's totally worth it. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. So, a couple last questions mm -hmm. I want to ask. Uh, earlier today, you were talking about one of your films, and you mm -hmm. brought up, uh, a pro is this a project or something you've already finished, Othello? Or Othello, Othello or yeah, right. Othello, um, I, f I finished it. It's a, okay. I took, it's a, a, from, of course, the Shakespearean play Othello, and I took and um, did the final murder scene. Okay. In it, and um, I'm a little bit of an obsessive geek <laughs> when it comes to Shakespeare. 
to give you an example, I, um, uh, I, I used to be a journalist. I worked with the Dallas Morning News and the Fort Worth Star-Telegram wow. for um, well over a decade. And um, I, so every night I was going to theater and um, museums, symphonies, different things. And um, I started watching Shakespeare productions and loved them. And so I got the full volume of his work and I plopped it down in my lap and I opened it to page one. And Those are I thick books. went all the way to the end. <laughs> wow. Yes. How long did it take you? And about nine months. I mean, obviously I wasn't able to read the whole yeah. time, but in the evening I would read. Funny little story I want to share with you, mm -hmm. since you're a Shakespeare nut. Um, when I was in high school, I got in trouble in my social studies uh, mm -hmm. class. Mr. Lennerson, if you happen to be out there, hi. Um, <laughs> I got in trouble just acting out in class, so his punishment was to uh -huh. copy Hamlet. Oh. Um, it got to the end of my punishment phase of about a week or so, and I decided, I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. So I did something stupid in class that day, uh, the, the Friday, so Monday started over again. Funny. Then Friday I got in trouble again, and he's like, are you still doing Hamlet? Yeah, I'm almost done. Can I get in trouble and just kind of extend it a little longer because I didn't have access to Hamlet? Yes, our school library might have had it, but mm -hmm. he realized I was getting in trouble on purpose. La he, he didn't laugh, but he said, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible the things we do as children uh, right. to get away with something. Right. So obviously I'm guessing this is a pretty much of a no brainer. You find inspiration for some of your works or a lot of your works mm -hmm. from Shakespeare in some way. Uh, well, definitely my first film and, and yes, there, there are times that I'm pulling from, um, my first film was called Billy Shakespeare and it was a, what if comedy, what if Shakespeare never existed until now. Life would suck. And, um, yeah. And then I also did, um, it was a music video. Uh, there's a Brooklyn rapper who um, raps Shakespeare sonnets in um, monologues. And he does it first in Shakespeare's language, then he interprets it in his own language. And uh, he and I, we did um, the to be or not to be together. And um, it ended up uh, getting into the Kenneth Branagh Shakespeare Festival, Film Festival wow. in Stratford upon Avon, England. Yes. I, I was so excited. Up. I might have to look this up because That's that totally sounds like... That's totally geeking out. Yeah. I want to I geek out about it. I, I'm hoping he's got something on YouTube. I want to check it out. Yeah. Because... Oh, there, it, it, there is. And in oh. fact, we just got um, word from a, um, a an educational group and they're actually adding it into their curriculum <laughs> for teaching. That is I was is so cool. excited. Very excited about that. Oh, and it played at the Elsinore... Um, it, Shakespeare conference for the 400th anniversary of his death. Wow. And um, if you guys will remember, the Elsinore Castle is where the setting for Hamlet was. Wow. That was in Denmark. Yep. And so I was completely geeking out about that too. <laughs> and in fact, both of the events to the film festival and to that they were happening at the same time. Of course, I wanted to be at both places, but it was absolutely impossible to split myself in half. It would and, be messy, but it um, could be done. It could be done. <laughs> well, this is true, but I didn't want to go in a box. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants that. So no, it's not a good, not a good option for me. So yeah, and I I went to the one in Stratford because I had already accepted that by the time the other one. So. And, and I mean, I also wanted to be there, but I wanted to be in both places because, yeah. I mean, it's going to Elsinore Castle, are you kidding me? Yeah, that would be, you know? I, that would be but the But I was pinnacle. at his birthplace yeah. and it was like, which is, the, we, well, I mean, if you were at the birthplace, amazing. the birthplace kind of, I think, trumps the, de, uh, the yeah, castle in Denmark because you're at the place that, well. Did he actually walk those streets? Yeah. It just gave me chills. It was funny, there was this guy there 
And he was, you know how they do those statue things? And he was made up just like Shakespeare. I swear to God, he looks so much like him. Wow. And here I am, I'm like this total geek. I would so be his groupie. I'd be the one running around going, hello, Mr. Shakespeare. <laughs> you know? And this guy, he comes out and he starts flirting with me. I turn bright red and this like gigantic smile. And I'm like, this is so ridiculous. But I'm like getting so excited and geeking out That's over a, a fake Shakespeare. <laughs> Is how bad I am. <laughs> it's like being the little child seeing the cosplayer of uh, yeah. Ella uh, uh, from Frozen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have to have those moments. Yeah, it I was definitely having one of those moments. It was hysterical. I was laughing at myself. <laughs> but you felt good about it. I did. And that's all that matters. Yeah. As long as you had fun, you felt good about about it, and it yeah. was an enjoyable, memorable oh my time. God, it was wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being a guest here for Notes and Nerds. Um, do you have a Facebook page that people can follow? I do. Um, I have a horror page, a horror group, and it's Deborah Voorhees Sheer Horror Group. Please come by and join. And you can also find out more about me on VoorheesFilms.com. Perfect. Although I must say I need to update my website because I don't have anything in there at the moment. But I'm trying. Very <laughs> well, again, thank you for being here on thank Notes you. and Nerds. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. We're going to go back upstairs and enjoy some more Slash and Bash here at Liberty Hall. Um, unfortunately, you all missed it, but uh, mm -hmm. keep tabs here at Notes and Nerds. We're going to have more uh, about Slash and Bash over the coming years because we're really good friends with Keith the Critic, and he loves his Slash and Bash, and there's always going to be great guests like Miss Borges here. Miss or Mrs., or do you want to have a secret? Secrets. Ms. Ms. For you. <laughs> so far. <laughs> no, Ms. is the Ms. Yeah. I'm not in my end. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, guys, we'll, uh, keep to, uh, keep tuned in for future episodes here at Nerds and Nerds. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.